Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about these two storms. We've got Humberto out over here in the Atlantic, just north of the Caribbean, and we have future Amelda, still not a tropical storm yet, but expected to become a tropical storm today. You can actually see on satellite that we do have a lot of convection. Our storm is really starting to wrap up. You can actually see the rotation inside of future Amelda right now. And as you can see, it is just off of the coast of Florida. Currently, we have a high pressure system up here that is steering Humberto off to the east northeast and a weak trough back over here you can actually see it on satellite look at this from Florida pretty much all the way back up the east coast you can see that we have some drier air moving in as a very weak trough sinks down to the south and east now what we're going to try to do in this forecast is figure out with all of our models and data what these storms are going to do we actually have a new track that just came in from the National Hurricane Center and we'll be going over if the model have changed since they've released that update or if there are any more surprises left in our storm future Amelda but before we get started if you could put some low pressure on that like and subscribe button it would really help out you guys have been amazing these last couple of videos so I really do appreciate the support the so first thing that we're going to do is go over our water temperatures if you look at our map Humberto is somewhere out in this region in some pretty healthy warm waters you can see we have 29 degrees Celsius typically we're looking for these yellow colors or just above 27 degrees Celsius to sustain tropical activity and you can see down here where Humberto is there's a reason why Humberto is so strong our warm waters down beneath it and the environment around it is perfect for our storm to be sustaining its current intensity at a category four strength storm now Amelda or future Amelda is back over in this region you can see when you can compare and contrast between these two areas we do see some higher temperatures around Amelda but the only reason why Amelda isn't as strong as Humberto is because of this if we look at where our highs and low pressure systems are you can see that there still is a high pressure system north of Humberto this is still allowing for Humberto to move off to the west again the air around our high pressure moves around just like this and so Humberto is going to generally track along where this 591 line is which is right in here and then as it hits that weakness of our high pressure system and this trough that is out over here you see this 585 line dips down like this the flow around this trough is very weak but still enough to cause some general flow in this direction as well so most of our flow is going to be bringing Humberto to the north and west and future Amelda which you can see by this blue dot is right over here further to the north and then the big question mark is still but confidence is actually increasing is whether or not Humberto will interact with Amelda and sling Amelda out to sea before it gets to the coast because again we don't need exactly that direct landfall to see potential catastrophic impacts with the Melda. Again, flooding can be very dangerous, as we've seen in Texas, as we've seen in other places across the United States. So we've got to keep an eye on that factor. But as I push this model forward even further, you can see that as we get into about Tuesday, September 30th, you can see both of our storms are strengthening. Amelda is probably pretty close to a hurricane. Humberto is still probably a major hurricane at this point. You can see our 591 line or our high pressure system back over here is kind of shriveling up and drying out like a raisin. And you can see Imelda is kind of interacting fully with our trough now. And both of these systems are probably going to be close enough by Tuesday, September 30th for some sort of interaction to happen in between them. Another thing that's going to be very important to dictate what these storms are going to do as they interact with each other is our shear and humidity environment around these storms. The more dry air or the more shear around either Humberto or Imelda will change our forecast a little bit and as you can see out over here in the United States our trough is ejecting down to the south and east and we still got a little high pressure system over here our shear boundaries are wrapping around both of these things right now so you can see Humberto is really not in any sort of disruptive shear pattern we don't have any really many blues around Humberto right now and future Amelda's back over here and she's actually already interacting with this trough a little bit and that extra little bit of shear is keeping future Amelda 
at least from being a tropical storm right now but as Imelda moves up further to the north it is going to be running into this upper level jet and we're going to be seeing more difluence aloft around Imelda some warmer and moist air as well in front of that front and that will kind of supercharge Imelda at least for a little bit before it interacts with Humberto as I continue to push this forward you can see our storm continues to push up to the north and starts to strengthen but you can also see as Imelda strengthens so does this jet as well and you can actually see a little bit of a low pressure develops back over here near Kentucky that's an upper level low and that's going to continue to tug Imelda really close to land here but as Umberto continues to keep its strength it is around this time in about 30 hours on September 29th going into September 30th where our storms will probably start to interact with each other somewhat but generally you can see that Imelda's environment is a lot less favorable than Humberto's and I don't really think that's going to change too much let's just go look at the dry air just in case because again the drier the air the harder it is for these storms to form so if we push this back to where we are right now you can see we have Imelda right here Umberto back over here Umberto does have a decent amount of dry air wrapping around it but because it has such an organized core you can think of the sun thunderstorms near the core as kind of a wall for dry air the dry air has to entrain or kind of dissipate these thunderstorms before it can get even further into the core and the stronger the updraft is the harder it is for that dry air to wrap around so Umberto will definitely be more effective at battling that dry air then future Amelda is given the strength of Amelda but you can see out in front of this trough there is a big axis of moisture here there's also a big axis of drier air that's going to be sinking down to the south and east and interacting with Amelda so as I push this forward you can see that actually tries to wrap around now the GFS has Amelda with a strong enough core to where that dry air takes a little while to try to wrap into the center of the storm and it might not be able to fully do that as long as that core is very healthy but if the core is not very healthy as that dry air starts to interact with future Imelda then that's going to really get into the core of the storm dissipate those thunderstorms dry out the core and make the storm weaker and more susceptible to steering currents from Humberto which by September 29th is going to be very close to future Imelda and we're probably going to start to see interactions between the two start to make Imelda wobble quite a bit and again keep this in mind this is only 30 hours out from here so our confidence we are in that range of accuracy obviously we are striving in the weather community to get there way earlier than today I mean the storm is only a couple days out from landfall it would have been nice to have certainty three days ago but again that's just kind of how it works right now technology is just not quite there yet the atmosphere is a huge place it takes a lot of data to try to model it all all right so now that we know all of that information let's talk about the strength and the track of Imelda because now we've all kind of understood what the environment's doing how these storms are going to be interacting with different environments so we're going to put all that together and come up with a forecast here so as we push this forward right to about the, our probably most important point of our storm here where we have Umberto close to Imelda right next to the coast of Florida you can see it's making a close pass again probably gonna have some tropical storm force winds trying to make it into Florida so could see some waves maybe even some storm surge over there it's gonna be pretty low but again you're probably not gonna want to be near the beaches into Florida but yeah the high pressure system is weakening that shear is still impacting Imelda Imelda will likely be a weaker storm meaning with this close approach as we see this little hourglass shape you can kind of see here wrapped around you can see that that is wrapping around both of our storms that means the pressures of our storms on the 29th are going to start to interact and the closer than closer they get and the lower that pressure gets in between our storms as you can see here this is our 1006 millibar line it's right around this point where we're going to start to see some steering from Humberto to Amelda so you can see Amelda is pretty far away from coast here meaning there's not going to be a whole lot of impacts over there to South Carolina at this point and Humberto grabbing Amelda as early as possible is exactly what we want to see and I agree with what the GFS is saying knowing that Imelda is most likely going to be the weaker storm with Humberto having more of a steering current and just being a stronger storm in general I do think this scenario is more likely now given the fact that Imelda has just been traveling so slow it kind of stalled over there north of Cuba but it's finally doing that northern trek but that has allowed Humberto to catch up and we're actually have a pretty good likelihood of seeing this steer well away from the coast and not really seeing much coastal impacts to South Carolina and anymore so my confidence is growing that Imelda will be a fish storm with minimal impacts to the Carolinas but Florida still needs to watch out for some tropical storm force winds and some high waves and rip currents 
maybe even a little bit of storm surge. We come over to the Euro Solution, which has a weaker storm due to more dry air moving in. You can see it also does the same thing because it takes so long for this to move up to the north and it's a weaker storm. It gets grabbed by Umberto and gets slung off to the east. Another one of our models, the Icon, also does this, but let's just check our ensembles just to make sure that there's not anything sneaky lurking in our data. As I push this forward, you can see we do still have like three ensemble members making it to land here, but again, our mass majority on the Euro Ensemble is over out to sea. GEFS is the same way, and the GEPS is the same way with a couple members over there. So now a very, very low chance for landfall with Amelda, and probably not even a close approach given the fact that Alberto is probably going to sling it out to sea. But let's go check our hurricane models, our higher resolution models, and see what they're saying as well. So pushing this forward, you can see that Humberto really starts to grab onto our storm before we even start to see tropical storm force winds make it into South Carolina. We might get some tropical depression force winds, tropical storm force winds on Tuesday, September 30th, probably in the early morning hours. And that could be pretty prevalent across the coast there of Georgia and South Carolina, maybe a little bit of storm surge, waves, and riptide, and also potentially some flooding issues, but that's not going to be nearly as bad as if we got a close approach and a stall. It is still going to stall there, so any rain that does fall could definitely see some flooding. We have the HWRF launches it away from the coast. Let's check the HFAST B, and yeah, it also kind of similar to the Euro weaker storm gets pulled away from the coast quicker and we probably don't even see any tropical storm force winds at all near the coast. So we come over here and look at our latest cone of uncertainty. I am now in agreement with this cone of uncertainty. It was a lot less certain yesterday just given the fact that we still had a lot of models indicating that a close approach or even a landfall was still possible yesterday evening but overnight models have come into serious agreement and given us a big heaping dose of good news with our storm so thank you everybody for watching have a wonderful rest of your day if you live out over here near florida you guys are probably gonna get the biggest impacts or at least the biggest guaranteed impacts out of imelda so i would definitely be watching out for that we do have a tropical storm watch all the way from daytona beach down to port st Lucie. and yeah i'll see you guys uh, on the next video peace